is no. Uh, Deputy Chief. Good morning, Council President and uh, members of the Council. Keith Foster, Deputy Chief, President of the Police Department, on behalf of Chief Jerry Dyer. And I'm asking Council to approve the exemption uh, to the CEQA um, guidelines as pertaining to this item that was supported by the Planning Commission and to also approve the text amendment uh, to the Fresno Municipal Code which would prohibit outdoor cultivation of marijuana. Uh, thank you. Uh, let me go ahead and take this out to the public. Is there anybody in the audience that wishes to address this particular item? Please come on up. Go ahead and uh, state your name and, rec and address for the record. You have three minutes, sir. Good morning, uh, council members. My name is Michael Green. I live on East Terrace Avenue in Fresno. In December, this council passed a temporary ban on growing medical marijuana outdoors. Today, we're looking at a permanent ban that will create a permanent hardship on patients who use cannabis in the city of Fresno. There are many big problems with that, but what I'd like to stress first is that what happens in Fresno doesn't stay in Fresno. If you pass this law today, other cities in Fresno County and the Central Valley will follow suit. They're going to climb on the bandwagon but their trust in this ordinance will be misplaced. This ordinance leaves indoor cultivation entirely unregulated, while outdoor cultivation is banned in every zoning district in the city. How do you think that's going to work out? Let me rephrase the question. What are the direct and foreseeable results of an outdoor growing ban? Will there be less marijuana grown in Fresno? Not very likely. Will there be more marijuana grown indoors? Yes, because this ordinance forces people to grow marijuana indoors. This ordinance doesn't prevent any of the crime problems that have been raised by the police department. It simply changes where they happen. Instead of people jumping fences, we're talking home invasion, robberies, house fires, and other negative impacts with home cultivation. My request today is to take a time out. The temporary ordinance is good until December. Let's do what the city said it would when you first passed the interim urgency ordinance. According to the staff report then, the purpose of this ordinance was to allow the city to study the complicated issues related to regulation of medical marijuana cultivation. To my knowledge, this study hasn't occurred. The city hasn't studied anything. From day one, the only goal has been a total ban on outdoor cultivation. Even though a lot of those complicated issues that were raised in the initial staff report are now sitting before the California Supreme Court, whatever legal justification you thought you had for this ordinance, it's gone now. You don't have it. And depending on the ruling of the California Supreme Court, you may not get it back. The city needs a plan B. A comprehensive cannabis ordinance would govern cultivation by individual patients both indoors and outdoors, and it would also set down rules for collective cultivation sites. The reason collectives are authorized in SB 420 is to provide cannabis to patients who can't grow their own, whether outdoors or indoors. When you ban all the collectives, as the city has done, as the county has done now, you see a big increase in home cultivation. Allow some collectives to open, and you take that pressure off. Many patients will choose not to grow at home, which is better for them and arguably for their neighbors. I know this is complicated stuff. I've supplied some very extensive written comments to the council. But we can do this. In fact, we have to do this. Sir, I'm going to ask you to wrap, wrap The time up for bans and half measures is gone. It is time to get serious about cannabis regulations, and I am now ready to take any questions you might have on the written comments. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let me go ahead. Anybody else in the audience wishes to address this item? Please come on up. Go ahead and state your name and address for the record. You have three minutes. Thank you. Good morning. You. My name is Brenda Linder, and uh, I live at 486 Gateway in Clovis. I have a business at 225 West Shaw in Fresno. Um, we have one of the highest auto theft rates in the country. In a 2010 CHP report, showed that even though the state auto theft was going down slightly, we were still rising here in Fresno. The police chief 
went to the media and said, um, had a couple of different responses. One, he said the increase in auto thefts here in Fresno was due to the bad economy, that crime always increases in a bad economy, which I agree with. He also said that it was because we kept having repeat offenders kicked out of the jail because they were just merely thieves and that that was creating a higher theft rate of automobiles as well. He then went on the media and explained to all of us how to try to prevent ourselves from becoming victims of auto thefts. A few years ago, and I have one of these in my front yard, a few years ago we had a high theft rate of sago palm trees. And neither one of these situations did the police chief come to you and ask you to outlaw late model Hondas or sago palm trees because they were being stolen and creating, quote, crime. Neither one of those situations. He tried to address, reassure the community that this would be responded to in an appropriate manner um, and instruct how to prevent the, the victimization of these crimes. And, and he didn't come to you and ask for a total ban on late model Hondas or Seiko, Seiko Palms because that would have been unreasonable by most people's standards. If you substitute medical marijuana, no one seems to see the unreasonableness of a total ban, however. It's been 16 years. As Mr. Um, Green stated a few minutes ago, it's time for reasonable regulations of medical marijuana. This city, the county, has been caught with their pants down a couple of times, and it's going to happen again. After 16 years, we don't have comprehensive regulations for dispensaries, for growing indoors or outdoors. The cases up at the Supreme Court right now are likely going to find your dispensary ban invalid because it's, it's uh, uh, predicated on compliance with federal law. That's up in front of the Supreme Court at the state right now. And it's going to probably, likely, because of their other cases and decisions, find that a total ban on outdoor growing is also void and preempted by state law. Meanwhile, we're not going to have regulations in place. It's going to blow up again. Dispensaries will open. Outdoor growing will, will be a field day again. And it will not accomplish the goal that, this, that the chief said he wanted, which was reducing crime. It will increase crime. It will not prepare for the next step instead of being proactive. I'm concerned about the cost of litigation to the city. I'll be on the other side of it, um, but I am concerned about it, extensive litigation when regulations aren't in place. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Anybody else in the audience that wishes to address, please come on up. Go ahead and state your name and address for the record. You have three minutes. Thank you. Uh, my name is Diane Valdivinos. Um, I reside at uh, West or East Nice, Fresno, California. I'm presenting you a letter here in representation from uh, United Food and Workers, uh, uh, commercial workers uh, representation here. Um, basically, um, dear Fresno City Council members, I'm writing today to voice my strong disapproval of the ban on outdoor cultivation of medical cannabis. I'm a special project the union representative for UFCW Local 5, the United Food and Commercial Workers. We represent hardworking people from many fields, including commercial food production, pharmacies, retail stores, textiles, and agriculture. Local 5 has agricultural jurisdiction throughout the state of California and we have recently started to organize affiliated cannabis working workers throughout our association member program. These medical cannabis cultivators are not only patients who struggle with physical illnesses, they are also good members of the community. They strive to dignify ways of life in these trying economic times, just like any other workers. They are concerned with putting food on their table, taking care of their children, and making their mortgage payments just like anyone else. Our associate members not only have access to our credit union, exclusive, exclusive union discounts, and legal assistance, but we, also, we are also working to provide a group health care option and will soon begin implementing a retirement saving plan for them as well. Sun-grown cannabis has a significantly low carbon footprint in the indoor grow cannabis. We do not need to burn more coal or oil to produce and affect medicine that can be grown using the sun-owned 
Sun's own energy. Sun-grown medicine is also significantly less expensive to grow than using artificial indoor lightning, lightning, which is extremely important to low-income patients. The cost of a pound of sun-grown cannabis is approximately $200 to $500 to produce, while an indoor pound would cost the cultivator in excess of $1,000 on average. Additionally, the full power of the sun creates me medicinal benefits throughout the de development of the cannabis plant, naturally occurring terpenes and flavonoids that simply cannot be replicated with artificial lightning. We are currently working with the state legislator to create a robust regulatory system for medical cannabis cultivation and distribution with the passage of Assembly Bill 2312. We urge the Fresno City Council not to ban outdoor cultivation and to wait until the passage of Assembly Bill 2312 in order to receive guidance from the legislature on the importance issue. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. And then I, thank you. Anybody else in the audience wishes to address this item? Sir, go ahead and state your name and address and for the record, you have three minutes. My name is Dustin Frazier Lowry. I live at 5545 North Millbrook Avenue. And I'm here today to strongly urge that you guys hold off on passing this ordinance as it stands and as it's written. Um, I feel that it's a way too restrictive. It will cost the patients thousands of more dollars to produce their medicines indoors. We're not talking about as simple as pulling two to three plants into a, your bathroom, putting them in a bathtub and putting a light bulb above it. That is simply not gonna work or provide you with the medicine you need. Um, we're, when you, just to take a two to four plant grow from outside to indoors, can cost that patient at least two to $3,000 to create a room that will supply them with the proper medication they need. Does that sound like a fair price to pay? When they can buy, produce it outside at, for themselves at a 75 to 80% cheaper rate. Doesn't make sense to me. Banning outdoor cultivation in Fresno is not truly gonna address what the true problems are that law enforcement is proposing. This is going, the only thing that this is going to do is increase fires, house fires, home invasions, a lot of other problems. Would you, ra I, ask you the, I ask you all today, would you guys rather watch your fruit or anything in your backyard be stolen from the safety of your own home? Or would you rather have them invade your home and have your whole family's life in danger? Not only that, but if you pass this ordinance, every criminal in town will know that all cultivation of marijuana is done indoors. I don't feel safe if this is passed. I have a son, a five-year-old son that goes to school next year. I have a wife I've been married to for 10 years. We've been in love with each other since we were 16 years old. Fresno's my home. I've been here for my dad's, dad's lived here, my dad lives here, and I've lived here. My dad's drove in all your kids to school for the last 30 years. I don't want to leave my family because you guys can't come up with sensible, comprehensible regulations for medical marijuana. It's been 16 years, 16 years, and we still are sitting here fighting and arguing. I'm not afraid of law enforcement. I have no criminal history, no criminal background. I like law enforcement, but I want them to serve and protect the entire community including medicinal cannabis patients. And the current thing that they have written does not address those. For these reasons, I would strongly suggest that you vote down the current drafted ordinance as written. Thank you for your time. And if I can be of any assistance in the future of helping you guys come up with these compre comprehensible regulations, I am more than willing. I am educated and dedicated to this purpose and cannabis as a whole. This is a missing part of our society that we need. Industrial hemp, industrial hemp can save this valley, lower our pollution. There, it isn't just about people getting stoned, people. This is medicinal. 
This is helping people. This is saving lives. I've witnessed medical marijuana save lives. Please do not throw the patients away with the bathwater. Address the real issues, the criminals. So I'm going to ask you to wrap it up. We're going to get Thank to you. It. Thank you very much, sir. Anybody else uh, from the audience wishes to address this item? Thank you, ma'am. Go ahead and state your name and address for the record. You have three minutes. Thank you. Good morning to the president, presiding uh, president, and to each council member. My name is Hester Hensley, and I am a resident of Fresno, California. has been for many years, since 1946, to be precise. My issue is with America, uh, legal marijuana, illegal marijuana, and any other drug that is in our community need to be banded. For the simple reason is that it causes a lot of confusion with citizens, non-citizens, and everyone. I understand that it may be a health issue, but, it, but it's also um, uh, um, let me start over. It's maybe a health issue, but it's also illegal because it causes a conflict. One reason is that right now we have a, a young man missing behind marijuana from Sanger. Haven't found him yet. And people want to know what's wrong with it, with um, illegal substance. It causes a conflict. It, it hurts people. It hurts all of us. It hurts the citizens. It hurts the non-citizens. The thing is, is that we have a police department that works um, tremendously to try to avoid um, to keep our uh, community safe. And with these drugs out here, it's not safe. That's where you get a lot of the game bangers and a lot of the people that's out here trying to sell this stuff is, and it causes a lot of killing. And I, I, for one, would like to see that it be banded for a lot of reasons, and thank you. You still have a couple of, about 40 <laughs> seconds left you need to. Because. You don't have to, but if you want to okay, finish but it. No, it, it, it need to be banded. You, you've already seen the things that have occurred behind it. All the killing and, and all the missing, the people that's been missing for a time around here. And I'm not just speaking of the young man from Sanger. There's other things that have occurred behind marijuana. And I understand uh, uh, sick people have health problems, but then that's where you have your doctors and you have all these pharmacies. You have all kind of uh, legal prescription drugs. I'm not, all it is with the marijuana and all these other drugs is money. And money is the root of all evil, evil when you're trying to do it the wrong way. It's not taking away the marijuana, it's the money issue. Thank you, Esther. Let me go ahead and take this back out. Is anybody in the audience wishes to address this item still? Saying that, I'll bring it back to the dais. Member Westerland. <laughs> yes, thank you, uh, Deputy Chief uh, Foster. A couple of questions. So, I um, uh, I know the uh, the police department has been looking at this issue and looking at this ordinance uh, for some time. Um, I'm I'm supportive of the ordinance. However, my concern is I don't think it goes far enough. Um, did you look at um, like, for example, Shasta County? I know there are lots of other cities. Uh, up and down the state that's it required the um, actual cultivation indoor to be in a accessory building um, different from the residential building and there are certain size restrictions I know one of the 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 stronger ones the better ones from my perspective is required uh, air conditioning with uh, scrubbers for for the um, odors that come out of it that it had to have heightened 
uh, the accessory building had heightened uh, requirements for electrical uh, electrical connections so uh, you know and really deal with that and and this doesn't cover any of that um, why why not a little more detail uh, and a little higher level of restriction great uh, great question council member we looked at a number of uh, various ordinances and we consulted with the city attorney's office and we looked at what issues could be um, more prohibitive and raise constitutional issues. And uh, certainly uh, after the advice of uh, our council, we felt that at least addressing outdoor ban at this point um, was the best option for us. Even though we know that there are going to be a number of um, issues with indoor cultivation and certainly um, you know, some elaborate systems are, are quite costly when you look at hydroponics and uh, fortified uh, air conditioning and generation systems. It could, it could be costly, but then if you look at the cultivation of the bare necessities, uh, one plant which yields four pounds a year, uh, it can be done safely without cost and without posing a hazard to the residents of those particular uh, households. Okay, well, uh, and I, I don't know, you know, in the accessory buildings, at least, you know, I've looked at, and, and I know um, either Amador County has either considered, or the city of Amador has either is, has considered and or passed, Live Oak, Elk Grove, Roseville, Yuba City, San Bernardino County, El Dorado uh, County, I think, considered, I don't know if they've passed it, Madera County, Orland, I mean, everybody, not everyone, but a, a great deal of, of cities have, have looked at that. You know, did we consider, and what would be the, the legal consideration for including um, that there has to be a alarm system um, for a particular building that is going to house um, indoor cultivation? City Attorney? Yeah, let, 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 let me answer that question by giving a little bit of context first as to how we arrived at this ordinance. Um, what we were looking at doing was, uh, and to clarify a couple of things on the record, and I will get to your question, council member. Um, this is not an ordinance dealing with medical marijuana. This is an ordinance dealing with the outdoor cultivation. And it's that that the council has police powers upon which to go forward and adopt uh, measures to uh, protect uh, adver the public against adverse secondary effects of particular land uses like the outdoor cultivation. So I just wanted to get that on the record. We did walk through with the police department what um, uh, secondary effects have been shown, what police reports we have of activities related to that, and we felt very comfortable at the initial level that a, a, a ban on outdoor cultivation was absolutely defensible. As we started looking deeper into um, the uh, uh, regulation of the indoor activities, there were some flags that were raised for us. and. What we agreed to do with the police department was present that that we felt was most defensible at this point. And as we go down the road and see additional issues develop, we would come back to council with refinements. So this is, th this is in essence the first step and we're gonna see how that uh, affects itself out in the public arena and then come back with refinements. That was the approach. That's how we got to, to what you have before you. Okay, because yeah, my, my concern is, I mean, and, and obviously this is, um, you know, This is, uh, you know, no, I'm not even going to say a tough call. It's not a tough call. I mean, it needs to be controlled. It needs to be, well, in, in my opinion, banned um, uh, completely. And, and it still is illegal in the United States, uh, the cultivation of marijuana um, on a federal level, even though, and, and even so in the state level, uh, except for under Prop 215, uh, it's still an illegal substance, still controlled and, and uh, banned uh, from that. Uh, unfortunately, 215 was so badly drafted, so badly uh, implemented uh, that it uh, just doesn't, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Um, but, you know, my concern is, is that, you know, we we're forcing it inside where, you know, people will have children and those children are exposed to it. And I think that was part of the, the rationale for having it into a um, uh, enclosed, uh, out, outdoor enclosure, uh, a separate building in and of itself, um, where they require you know 
uh, alarm systems and, and all of that, and it gave it some very definite parameters uh, in trialing, trying to deal with it. I mean, I'm, I'm supportive of this as a, as a stopgap measure. I mean, I would be willing to look at and, and expect that as there more clarity comes up uh, with the, the law and as court cases get decided, that this is not a very aggressive ban. Um, there are stronger communities that have done more uh, in terms of, you know, what is required to cultivate it indoors. And I'm concerned that we haven't addressed all of those issues here. I will, for, for the record, um, indicate that, um, you know, w we have, and I've considered the, the testimony that we have here today, uh, considered the testimony on our other hearings that we've had on this. Um, the record is replete um, with uh, the illegal activity related to this marijuana that uh, we have in the city of Fresno had homicides conducted uh, as a result of the outdoor cultivation uh, of marijuana, whether it was under the guise of medical marijuana or just a profit base operation, uh, which is what we see on a pretty regular basis. Um, besides Chief Foster, Chief Dyer has addressed us on this issue. Uh, we've had lots of briefing and lots of uh, um, discussion about it. And uh, it's very clear to me, um, and, I, and I, I, on the debate that we have uh, on all of this, uh, that this is a necessary step um, forward uh, in this particular issue. And so I'll, I'll make a motion to approve it at this time. So. All right, I do have a motion. Is there a second? Second by Member Brand. Uh, Member Borges. It's been a little while since I took a gander at the um, the county rules uh, that relate to this. Can you comment on that? Maybe you or maybe even the city attorney's office comment on it. how does this play out with uh, with uh, county legislation? Uh, during our previous um, uh, council meetings, I believe you made the um, suggestion to look at their ordinance, and we've done that, and uh, they're very similar into um, the way that it's written. In terms of material provisions, uh, would there be anything inconsistent or markedly different? We, we had attempted to make sure that there, there would not be inconsistency because of the enforcement on both the, the city and then city islands and, and uh, adjacent county areas. I don't believe there are any uh, significant inconsistencies, but I'll have our Deputy Mike Flores, who looked at the ordinance, comment on that. Thank you. Well, the, the, um, the county ordinance deals with both dispensaries and with cultivation, number one. Mm -hmm. uh, their, their cultivation aspect is very similar to ours in which they require the growth for the dispensaries to be indoors. And, but they, what they also go one step further in which they, there's specific, specific zones in which these activities can take place as opposed to ours where you can grow it indoors. There's no prohibition of growing it in any particular zone or area. It's just you have to grow it indoors and our indoors is defined as a a structure, secured structure, walls, and et cetera. So there, there's goes a little farther because it covers both dispensaries and cultivation. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're, when it talks about cultivation, ours is similar in that they require their cultivation to be indoors as well. And obviously prohibit outdoor. Cultivation, and that's really the the linchpin. It's identical for purposes of outdoor cultivation. Yes. All right. I mean, I think everybody can appreciate, especially in the top half of Fresno, uh, there's so many county islands. You know, you'd hate to, for someone to basically move from one region to the next and have different uh, different laws. Um, it makes me more comfortable knowing that uh, there is that consistency between the county and the city. And um, there, was, there was an individual that came up and, and asked about a new piece of legislation that's supposed to be coming out. Um, I don't recall what that was. AB 2312. AB 2312. Mm -hmm. And 
what again is AB 2312? Does anybody know? I would I, I'd have the summary that is uh, provided to you. It, it appears that it would look to establish a state approved registration system uh, for the commercial dispensing and production of medical marijuana, have a board of enforcement, uh, it looks like a state board of enforcement responsible for issuing registrations, establishing fees and fines, and then establish an industry funded medical marijuana fund to pay all the costs of implementing, enforcing, and administering the state's medical marijuana program. How would how would AB 2312 bear on a a rule that is being proposed right now? I'm not seeing any bearing because it's a state regulatory action. Um, so, and did any? I think maybe we should have one of the individuals uh, that provided this information just come up and quickly answer. Thank you. Amendment Bill 2312, actually, and what you're reading there also has already passed the assembly. It's currently on its way to the Senate right now. Um, and what was your question exactly? How would this bear on the piece of legislation being proposed today? Uh, well, if we waited and held off on what we're passing today and waited for this, then we would have regulations from legislators already in place that we could follow as guidelines. It, this is a prohibition on the cultivation of outdoor marijuana. This, from what I was just described, is a regulatory framework. Um, so maybe, maybe I'm missing something, but ultimately, if there are any inconsistencies between our rule and the state rule, state trumps, unless I'm missing something. It, it really depends on the issue. Um, yeah. As of right now, based upon what we have before you, this is the local land use authority, the local police powers, to say that outdoor grow of marijuana is prohibited. This particular legislation, which I, I have not gone at depth on, but this legislation appears to set up a state-funded uh, and uh, state oversight regulation of the use of medical marijuana and medical marijuana enforcement. So they seem th th just totally at, different. At, at first blush, I would have to say there is a distinction between the two, and, and you can have that regulation imposed at the state level but still have areas where you're saying you cannot grow yeah. at the local level. So does this uh, ordinance, will it ban the outdoor cultivation of medical marijuana? It's across the board to, to marijuana completely, outdoor cultivation of marijuana. But indoor has yet to be? It, is, it would still be allowed under this ordinance. Um, I would hate to, I mean, I don't, I don't see how, how 2312, based on how it's described to me and this would would bear on it but even if it were to um if there was any material well, the point of passing this on to you guys was to show you that there are already industry leaders stakeholders Got important it. people that are out there working on legislation and that we as citizens of fresno can come up with comprehensible regulations just like these people it's Got not it. that hard All right. um, i love how you know when are we going to be heard from you know, I like how you asked me about AB 2312. That's, that's cool. But when it comes down to the real needs of the patients, we're overlooked. The only ones that get talked to is law enforcement. I appreciate it. Thanks, thanks for responding Thank to the questions. Um, as I mentioned, if there's any material inconsistency that would bear on, on our local police powers by the state, the state would trump. But from what I'm hearing, there's no overlap, and this does not pertain to indoor cultivation that would otherwise um, make itself available to um, uh, the medicinal um, user community. Um, I don't see I don't see a, a challenge or a problem with this. All right, um, board is clear. Uh, so, I'll, as as the presiding president, I'll, I got some questions. Uh, city attorney, there, there's a couple of, uh, I guess, this court cases that 
that is currently be heard on some of the uh, subject items. And is it kind of the same scenario we're dealing with technicalities is that the court cases is maybe on something else and what we're dealing here is is different the, the court cases really are focusing on dispensaries and the the ability of the local bodies to regulate dispensaries um, this particular ordinance that we're dealing with currently before the council is not a dispensary ordinance this is about the growth the outdoor growth of marijuana within the city limits so uh, the existing cases that are up on appeal before the Supreme Court would not have a direct uh, bearing on the council's ability to do this at this point. Okay, and, and that's, I mean, you're going to have to help me because, you know, we're, we're, we're starting to go into the legalese realm here uh, in terms of my understanding of it. Uh, and so I'm, I'm just trying to make sure that, that I comprehend. We're saying cultivation. We're not saying dispensaries or, or medical marijuana. Um, the debate that's happening uh, in the court is dealing specifically with dispensaries, marijuanas. And the, the cases that have come up have dealt with dispensaries. Now, there is some argument to make that the, the cases themselves would even go broader to say that there may be an inability at the local level to have any regulation involving um, marijuana. Um, that's a very broad read. That's not the recommendation that we would have to the council at this point. We believe um, that the council currently has the authority, the police power, if it decides, if it's inclined to adopt this prohibition on outdoor growth. Okay. Uh, Chief, quick question. Deputy Chief. Sorry, Chief Dar. Yes. Um, I remember the discussion that we had here in, in, uh, in terms of uh, getting uh, the buy-in, at least for most council members, was uh, uh, kind of a, a temporary ban and, uh, and allow the department to, uh, to do some studies, to do some uh, community outreach, um, and, and so to come up with something. Uh, what uh, there's some concerns raised in terms of engaging the specificness of the, of the people that are, are doing these type. Uh, have we done that or? or Absolutely. Okay. Um, Lieutenant Newton has went out to uh, neighborhoods in every council district, held meetings, and uh, spoke specific to this issue. Um, some went uh, in great length, uh, several hours. Um, he's made himself available uh, for contact after the meetings, and he's uh, had dialogue with a number of citizens both that were supportive of the ban, and then there were a few that weren't supportive of the ban. But we went out to every council district, every policing district, and uh, spoke to those issues and took their concerns um, to heart, and um, we're still supportive of this particular item. In terms of the analysis of the, of the indirect impact of, of this ban and there's some discussion about that we, we don't necessarily solve the larger issue, all we've done is move the the, the real problem in in house, and there would be a, a jump or a spike in that. What, what I'm assuming that has been discussed, but what what the outcome of, of that discussion is? We, we've talked about that also with the prescriptions that are given for medicinal medicinal use. One individual may be entitled to grow 99 plants. We're seeing a number of those. Each plant, uh, once it's fully mature, would yield up to four pounds of dry bud. When you start looking at uh, that amount of marijuana and its medicinal use, and it's hard to fathom anyone with any medical condition could use that. And, and we'll take that, that argument out. If you looked at one pound of, of dry bud, it would yield approximately um, 890 marijuana cigarettes. One plant would yield um, 3,584 marijuana cigarettes. If you used, um, we're using um, 10 cigarettes a day, that four plant complement would accommodate that. If you extrapolate it out to six plants, it would yield approximately 5,376 marijuana cigarettes, which would accommodate um, about 15 marijuana cigarettes a day. That's, we're just talking about one plant to a one and a half plant. 
if you look at 99 plants, it's astronomical. And so we know that uh, marijuana is the cash crop of today's environment, especially in the cartels and, um, you know, throughout a number of gang infrastructure. You know, I'm not going to reiterate all the, the arguments that we've made during other presentations about one pound of marijuana could be harvested for $75 and sold for $6,000 a pound. Uh, you know, we have been involved in numerous 100-pound busts of uh, marijuana by individuals that are looking to exploit um, this issue. And those individuals had marijuana cards that allowed them to grow, um, you know, 99 plants. So, you know, we've seen what this drug has done to the community. We know how it's being exploited. And um, we're very comfortable with the fact that if someone who has a legitimate medical use grew, you know, one to four plants indoor, it wouldn't create um, too much of a hazard and it would meet their, their medical needs. We're confident of that. Okay. Um, City Attorney, I, I know you said that the, the, the legislation that's right now going through uh, the state um, doesn't necessarily have a direct impact in terms of uh, our, as local ju jurisdiction, uh, as you would say, our, our authority here. But if, if the legislation, because one of the big arguments that we've had uh, that I recall during this is that the state passes this bill or that came through, and uh, but they didn't provide a mechanism mechanism for how 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 for the local lo localities to deal with it, and that was one of the big backdrop in the discussion is that we don't have the mechanism here locally, especially uh, you know with, with with the tough times that we have and how these things are impacting us to provide the financial mechanism to support whatever the state through now uh, apparently this particular bill is going through a process looks like it's providing a mechanism to a certain level to address some of the large issues here at the local uh, uh, side of it how does that if it does pass and if it does come down through saying that we have to implement something where would that fall uh, under i just want clarification the <clears throat> the ordinance, as I, as I understand it, or the proposed state legislation, mm -hmm. as I understand it, uh, would set up an overriding state arm to regulate the um, medical marijuana uh, activity in the state. Um, I don't believe that that would prohibit the city from exercising its police power related to land use to say um, outdoor prohibition is what we want to see because of the adverse secondary uses or to take a position that it's only allowed in certain zone districts if that's where the city wanted to go. That is a local decision within the power of the local governing body to determine uh, based upon the local conditions. So the, so the state can say we want to see, well, they approve this, but then the local can say, yeah, but you can't do it here. The, the state law would lay out the over, oversight of the sale, the distribution, that kind of thing. But that in and of itself, the, the, the notion of state preemption of local law requires a very specific statement of preemption before the city would lose its ability to exercise its police powers in these local matters. So the bill would somewhere in, in this legislation would have to say specifically that the, the mechanism that is set up here would somehow supersede, supersede the, the, the local local's ability to say. Regarding the land use related to medical marijuana. And at this particular you, you have not done enough. I, I'm, I'm actually, I have pulled it up and I'm looking at it right now. I, I, I haven't yet had a chance to fully digest it. But as I look at it, my initial take is it does not do that. OK. All right. And uh, so Deputy Chief, in, in terms of your assessment, look, looking, in, and I know we've gone through, but at least from the secondary impact of moving from uh, the total ban of outside and, and having some of the issues raised, that that may or, or will occur if it's in-house. Uh, 
that is something that we, we foreseen, but it's, I, I don't say a foreseeable acceptable risk, but it, it's something that w we see, but it's part of, um, uh, part of the work or, or part of the things that's gonna happen. We've, we've looked at it and as I can indicated before, we do not see the individuals that are going to be using it for, you know, medical purposes, trying to cultivate 99 plants in a structure. We know that. We know that those who have a bona fide use will cultivate what they need and to meet their, their necessity. What we believe that those that are attempting to exploit um, the marijuana cultivation for profit will go elsewhere. And some of those have been uh, in the county at warehouses and uh, their narcotics office works closely with ours and we've yielded uh, numerous busts of um, high grade marijuana being sold for profit by criminal enterprises. This is my, I wanna say that I think this is my last question but it just depends how you ask it to. Uh, I, I know that um, Member Westland was asking about cities that had similar type of ordinance that we passed, and some are more stringent than, than what we're looking at in other processes. We, we've asked also about our comparison with, um, with county in terms of the, of the outside. Uh, have there been other cities that may not have gone this route but have looked at, uh, at a ordinance or a, or a policy that looks to incorporate um, medicinal marijuana out considering outside cultivation? I'm not aware of any. Um, as, as I spoke with uh, Member Borges, our ordinance is very similar to the county which prohibits all outdoor cultivation. And um, you know, I believe that a number of uh, other cities have that same prohibition. So um, I'm not familiar with any that made a distinction between allowing outdoor cultivation for uh, medicinal use or not. Okay, all right. Um, uh, thank you very much, uh, Deputy Chief. Uh, Council, um, yes. upon further review, I, I am noting some things in the bill. The bill would preempt local laws regarding the regulation and control of medical marijuana and would prohibit a medical marijuana facility as defined within the, the law, the proposed law from operating without state approved registration. Um, the bill would generally require a city or county to permit no fewer than one medical marijuana dispensary uh, per 50,000 residents. It has a number of specific provisions dealing with dispensaries and what would be required under dispensaries, but as I read it, it does not prohibit our police powers and the exercise of our police powers with regards to what land uses are appropriate or not appropriate. I would argue that this would, uh, if adopted, it would impact our ability to regulate, from a land use standpoint, dispensaries, but not our ability to say what grows are appropriate, outdoor grows are appropriate or not. Okay, all right. Thank you for, for the legalese clarification. Um, at least for, for me, I. I I think uh, from uh, the perspective of this legislation, um, if it does go through and it goes and it passes, uh, I think I, I may have a, a definitely a different pos position uh, that that I may have when this thing, if it does come back. Uh, but at this particular point, um, knowing where we are, I'm inclined to to support it, but, but I'll, I'll be up front to, uh, to Deputy Chief. If this bill does pass, then I think um, there's uh, some dialogue, some discussion that uh, that this body is going to have to have, and how we uh, look at uh, what the state has done, even if we can say legally this is what it means. Um, I think there's some probably some broader perspective that's going to have to be considered uh, for it. That, uh, that that's my current position right now, but I'm done. Um, Council, the board is clear. We do have a motion and a second. Let's go ahead and vote. All in favor? Opposed? Uh, passes 5-0 uh, with Council President and uh, Member Baines absent. Thank you.